My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. And today we are looking at, or we are, and I am answering a question that someone asked me. They said to me, Matt, what spring compression tool for pistons do you recommend? And I said, none, you don't need them. Specifically if you're doing motorbikes, but generally you don't, a lot of the time anyway. It's all about technique and just knowing what to do. So we're gonna go through exactly what to do. On motorcycles, it's a bit different than cars. A lot of cars have the top casing and the cylinders all as one. Some motorcycles do that, so some GSXRs and stuff, some other engines, they do do it like that. So they have uh, the top casing and the cylinder bank like this, they have them all incorporated into one casting. Uh, silly idea, because when you trash your cylinders, it means you've got to trash your top case or have it all bored out and messing around instead of doing a straight, straight swap. Any road. Um, so, this is a cylinder that's going to be used for a cross-section engine, so don't worry about that. It's just for demonstration purposes. I very quickly got some, oh, this is just uh, 85W90 uh, for doing my chain. Just slapped a bit of lube on them, and then what I've done is I've quickly off-camera got the piston rings, put them in, not bothering with the oil control rings, um, because actually they're the easiest rings to do. So, what we've got is we've got two sets of rings here, our top and bottom rings. Oiled everything up, that's the most important thing. On the spigots on cylinders, you have, let me master of zoom you, might as well so we can get this bit in and change the focus because it's on manual focus and let it focus. There we go, absolutely wonderful. So, the way you do this is that you will have your crankshaft with the cylinders poking out and so on and so forth. It can be a pain in the ass. So I've separated this out just to show you the, the, the technique. So on these spigots, there is a chamfer that you can see there. And all you need to do is coax the ring to sit against that chamfer. So you'll have the open end and what you do is you get the closed end and opposite the open end and back it into the wall. So in a sense, I'm putting this, if I can show you with this piston, I'm putting this, the closed end is on this side right in relation to in relation to that one and i'm jamming it in like that so it pushes the open end of the ring this way so it opens out right and you can hopefully see that just just about there master zoom there we go so like that you can see there's a bit of fluff what the, oh glass fiber who would have thought right so now we've got a nice close up view instead what we're going to do is Let's just say we set our rings. I know it's going out of focus it's because I keep on moving everything. We've got our first ring gap over here, just say. Now, I'm not saying this is according to any manual or out. We're just going to put that there, and we're going to put the other one at 120 degrees out. What I'm doing is I'm sure, obviously, you can't do this with rods and everything and all that jazz because everything's in your way. But I'm just showing you the technique. You can see this ring gap here. If we get the back of the ring, so the non-open section, the opposite the open section, and we just put it into the chamfer, you'll see it closes the ring up and that's it, she's gone. Then what you do is you roll this around like that, and that closes up this ring gap, which you won't be able to see, which is there. This ring gap there. And you'll see that if I just roll it and... and I'm just gyrating like this. There we go, she's in. And that's it. <laughs> Bloody cameras. There we go, so that's, that's piston, that's piston. She's in, fantastic. No scratching, no horribleness. Let me pull out a bit, wipe it on the curtains. There we go, so no messing around or whatever. Right, and she just pops out like that. So, you might be saying to yourself, but Matt, what happens if they're a bigger pistons? This is just a baby minute thing. What about something bigger? So what we're gonna do is, <laughs> imagine me trying to fit that in that hole. <laughs> Good Friday night out. So, what happens if you've got a bigger piston? This is just oil off my hands, as you can see. Um, what happens if you have a bigger piston, right? I did a video on the SV1000 
Um, and this is that. Cool. Good camera shot, that one. So all I do is just stick it on, right? I know I ain't got multiple camera angles or shit like that. And what I do is you just squeeze the rings with your fingers. That is almost the first ring. Then you squeeze it in this little gap in there. That's ring number one. This one, I know that the end gap is down below. So I squeeze it this side first. And there, I expect it to resist me. And then that's that. Then it's these fucking stupid rings which you just squish and you just rotate the cylinder and it should, in theory, get them. But not every time. So what you can do is just back up, oh, fucking not back off the whole bloody lot. <laughs> back off a bit. And uh, yeah, you'd be laughing. So first ring, down to second ring. Give that a squish. Squish in this side. Push it in there. Squish these rings. Give it a rotate. There we go. And that's it. That's literally it. Chuck your chain. See, that was the one where the oil control rings decided to be fucking assholes. Give it a little rock as you go down. It just means you're not pushing. Because when it goes, that's the problem. If you push to get over the resistance, over the friction, what happens is, is you all of a sudden go and you clout something to something. So just give it a quick rotate. So that was the SV. Same kind of treatment, although I didn't, it wasn't the best explanation in the world. I just kind of got on and did it. And that's with all the engine gubbins and a floating cylinder and all the rest of it. That's specific to that arrangement. But you might be saying, what happens if it's, you know, these, we've, 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 what, we've gone up in size from this to this. What happens if we had something a lot bigger? <laughs> so what happens if we had something massive? Now, if you look at the uh, rings that we're dealing with, just say for the, the Kawasaki 600, these, well, these are the oil control rings, but as you can see, the baby rings, right? If I take one of the, don't you roll off, Jesus. That's it, it'll kill the local ant community. They'll think, it's, they'll think they're in Indiana Jones or something. So that's a ring off the Kawasaki. The ring on the bigger piston, this one, this is off a BMW F650, or FE650, sorry. Um, so these are a lot big, but in all reality, and all this is all scrap, basically, this ring is about a millimeter. I think it's 89 millimeter. Uh, point, point, point 0.89 millimeters. This one nearly fits in there. I think the ring in that goes in the BMW is 1.2. These are, for lack of a better word, anemic compared to something like this. This ring here, well, there's what? It's about four millimeters. You get one, two, three, four, four and a half of these to this. Because someone's going to say, but I've got a big V8 and you can't do it by hand. Yes, you can. So, the problem I've got with this, is a bit of a shame, is that this bottom ring, this secondary ring, is stuck. It wants to come undone sometimes, but it doesn't. But the top ring is nice and loosey-goosey. If we get this artillery shell, which is not an artillery shell, this is actually a sleeve. This is the sleeve that this piston came from. Now, we'll put that there. We can do the same thing, right? We can't put it in this way, obviously, because... The, the, the secondary ring, the secondary compression ring is knackered. But can I by hand get this in there just with my mitts? So we'll do the same thing. Where's that gap? There's the gap. You can see the ring gap there. So all I'm doing is I'm going to push this piston in at a slight angle, like so, and then just roll it round. Roll it round, push it with my fingers. Oh. Let me try that again. There we go. That's it. We are now down to the second compression ring, which won't go in. But that first ring is in. This is. We're also at the carbon band at the top where the soot is. But that's that. Can I get rid of... Because it'd be nice just to... Stop it! 
can I actually, can, can this ring actually come out? Because it is stuck. And it's because this, this piston is a knackered piston. Oh, wait, it's a knackered. This was a replacement. Let's see if I can get it out and do it again. There we go. So this compression, bottom compression ring. Even if I snap it, at least I'll get it out. It's because the piston itself is damaged. Beyond repair. Yeah, the, the, the second compression ring is stuck. She's badly stuck. It is a substantial ring. It's like a bloody armband. Come on. It's literally that break. You see, yeah, it was that stuck that the ring is broken. But you can see how hefty these things are. Um, let's pinch the ring. That's just a scratch in the old. Uh, there we go. Oh yeah, it's, it's proper buried in there. So back to where we were. Can we put this in? So same as before. Squish it down. And the angle that I'm putting it on is just to catch it. It's not much. There's that one. And then where's the squishy for the? Oil control ring. I don't know if the oil control ring is actually in any good condition. I just feel like something's stuck in there. What is that? <laughs> I thought I saw a bit of debris or something. So, oil control ring or scraper ring. Are we going in? It's a bit nasty, that ring, isn't it? There we go. See, so, oh, all the way to the bottom. And this, this cylinder's actually not oiled. <laughs> it's all right, it's a diesel, it's got enough pit, it's got enough. Well, that's good seal, is that? You can even see the horny marks, still in it, well, you can't see them, but you can even see the horny marks on the bottom. But we've even, we've even scraped a line off in the rust. With the ring, that's cool. But yeah, we can quite easily get that in there with this method. And this is a ring. That's with all that carbon and crap in there. And this is with a ring that comparatively is uh, no joke. So, can you do it with this method with big rings? Yep. Can you do it with baby rings? Yeah. Can you do it with intermediate things? Yes. It's all about technique and it's all about, instead of trying to fight it with your fingers, you push it, it comes out here. You want to use the open span of the ring to your advantage. And in a sense, all you're doing is you're just coming in at a slight angle. Instead of being perpendicular, ever so slight angle. As soon as you get that ring started, the bore, as you push down, will slowly close up the ring, and in she goes. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.